start with Coach Mack. Please raise your hand and we'll get a mic to you for questions. We'll start up front, please. Coach, what did you like specifically about your, your running backs against Bowling Green? Well, I talked to those guys about playing violent and playing physical the entire game. And one thing that just jumps out at you and that really impressed me was the physicality and the violence they ran the football with. Uh, we knew it was going to be vertical seams there. And they did a good job of pressing that and, and tacking those seams when they had the opportunity to. But as you go back and watch the film, you can see there was a chance that they had a chance to bounce, bounce, uh, bounce runs and then get to the safeties. And those are the things we talked about, making that one defender miss. That's our job in the run game is to always make that free hitter miss. And that's one thing they did a great jo good job of. Coach Heupel said yesterday that uh, you know he expects Jalen Wright to kind of bounce back this week with a potentially a, a, you know a better look. Did you talk to him after the game about you know being a little bit more patient as a runner? It seemed like he was trying to you know be a little you know bouncy and try to bounce everything, try to make the big play. No question. I think a lot of times when you get those young freshmen in there, they get excited, the adrenaline starts pumping in Neyland Stadium, and you know you just got a little anxious. I think once the game started a little bit, he started to calm down and he started to know what his role is and, and some of the things that he can do. So we brought him to the sideline. We've talked uh, extensively over the last few days, and I think you're going to see a different Jalen Wright going forward. Is, is, that, is that a different guy that you saw from Paul Camp the first game? It was. Uh, you know, just the bright lights probably uh, got him excited a little bit, but I think one of the main things is to calm him down a little bit more on the sideline as he came back to the sideline. So, you know, it was a little bit uncharacteristic of the Jalen Wright that I saw all through camp, especially the back half of camp, but I think he's going to recover and be fine. Where? Jerry, how, how did you feel like the pass pro went with, them? I guess, mainly those top two guys? How do you, maybe there's a couple of blitzers kind of leaking through there. How did you feel like they did in that area? I think if any area that we can improve on, I think that's the number one thing as you look at the film that we can improve on. There were certain situations where our eyes were in the wrong place or for, the, for whatever the reason we were late getting to certain people or just let a guy free, a free here to come through. And I think as you look at it over the next couple of days, that's one thing that we're constantly trying to improve on. We got to make sure that you know, we're sound and we're doing our job and our responsibility to, to keep the quarterback upright. So that's one thing that we definitely got to improve on is the protection piece. Is that a surprise or classic first game thing? Uh, it was a little bit surprised of the person it came from. You know, sometimes it was coming from Jabari, and then sometimes it was coming from Tyon. So they kind of shared their role in, as far as some of the uh, missed assignments. But I do think, you know, just the game, with the speed of the game, Jabari has not played a ton of football, so the speed of the game he was trying to get used to. And also, too, with Tyon, first game ever uh, in that environment is something that he has to get used to as well. Yeah, Coach, two questions. One, did, did you like the rotation with Jabari and Tyon, and, and how do you manage that moving forward? And then secondly, um, when you talk about Pitt's defense, what stands out to, to you in terms of trying to run the ball against them? Well, I think I like the rotation a lot. I like the way they balance each other. You know, when they needed a blow, they allowed me to, to get them out. They, they knew when they, when they were too tired to tap out, and, and we brought the, the fresh body in. And I like that. I like them guys not being selfish, understanding, hey, look, if I can't go, I need my teammate to take the, take the, take the load off me. And that was one of the things that I liked a lot. We had a good balance, a good transition going back and forth. Uh, when I look at Pitt's defense, I see physicality, and I see fundamentally sound. I told, told the guys earlier, when they're supposed to take it on with the correct shoulder, that's what they're going to do. If they're supposed to fit the right gap the way they're supposed to, they're going to fit that gap. They don't miss a lot of open field tackles, uh, which is a compliment to you can see uh, where they've been one of the best defenses stopping the run in the country for the last few years. And that's one of the things we're going to have to do is our challenge for us to go out there and run the ball physical like we did last week. And then when we get a chance to get those explosive plays, those one-on-one -on -one tackles with those safeties and linebackers, we got to make somebody miss. Why was uh, Marcus Pierce the choice in the fourth quarter the other day to, to get some carries? And if, if one of the top three guys was, was out, is he a guy that could, could jump into the rotation and, and get some carries? Yeah, I think Marcus has been doing a great job ever since, you know, you go back to spring football, a guy that really makes it important. He's really diligent in the way he studies the film and the way he attacks approaching the game every week. That's one of the things that allow him to get those reps in the game. We had uh, a nice lead and we felt like an opportunity to get some of those guys that had already carried the load of blow. And Marcus deserves every carry that he, that he gets. And when he got in the game, he showed what he could do. And, and that's what we expect. You never know when your number may get called and you, he created an opportunity for himself and he took advantage of it. Coach, was what you saw from Tyon in, in the first game, what you guys had seen pretty much through camp, or, and what maybe surprised you or 
or maybe didn't surprise you about his performance in the first game? Yeah, I think the way the violence that he ran the ball with definitely didn't surprise me. That's what we had been seeing all through camp, the way how physical he was. He had a strong lower body, and he was able to drag some pals for a few more yards, and especially yards after contact was one of the things we liked so much. One of the things that did impress me that I was kind of shocked, you know, he was able to make some safeties miss in space, and uh, he hasn't been able to do that a whole lot during camp. For whatever the reason may be, he went out there on Thursday night and he showed us that he does have that ability to make that open field tackle miss. Over here, Coach. In college football, when you see teams with multiple really good running backs, sometimes they'll put two on the field at one time, and sometimes they don't. And it makes you wonder why that doesn't happen. What are some of the factors in the decision making on whether to have two of those guys on the field at the same time for you? Yeah, I think it's more about whatever the defense presents for the week. Uh, from a personnel standpoint, we know we got two really good ones. Heck, we got three three good ones, to be honest with you. But uh, we feel like it's just about whatever the defense presents to create those mismatches. Sometimes the defense of that week, it will allow us to do that. Sometimes we have some different directions that we want to go in the game plan. Uh, you know, just trying to always come up with those creative ways from a, a situation where we play with tempo. You know, how do we get those those guys being that 20 personnel or whatever personnel group that Coach Heifel or Coach Goldish wants to be in for that week. So it just really depends on the defense week to week. Ian? Just what you see out of Jabari that led to his success, and it really seemed like he got going or got better as the game progressed. I think just getting used to the flow of the game. You know, one thing about Jabari you see is, like I said, he hasn't played a ton of football here. And as he keeps going more and more and getting more experience, you're going to see a better version of him. Uh, he was able to catch a pass uh, last week out of the backfield. I think that's one the skill set that's going to continue to get utilized as we continue to go forward, just his uh, pass receiving abilities. But also, too, just the way he runs the ball and the way he's able to get through those short, small areas. One thing that he impressed us with was just those third down opportunities where he had to cram it in there and get those tough yards right now. Uh, probably a little bit uncharacteristic of what a lot of people think he is, but he is a tough physical runner as well. And he's just got some makeup in his mind. When those opportunities present, he just goes. Uh, Adam Sparks, Knox News. In terms of long runs, popping long runs, what, what leads to those? Is it something that's set up in the blocking? Is it something about wearing down the defense? What, where do those long runs come from? Well, I think it all starts up front. Uh, Coach Ellerby done a great job with our offensive line, putting those guys in a position to be violent, be physical. Some of those guys were player of the week internally with our football team. And one thing that you can see, they created those seams, they created those holes to allow those backs uh, to kind of run through. Uh, after that, after they did their job, now it's up to us when we get to that second and third level. Now it's up to us to showcase our ability, some of those guys' natural God-given ability to make those people miss and then deliver your pass. When, like I keep saying, like the physicality that those guys play with, uh, th that is really what's impressive. Some of those guys have been sore ever since the game ended last week. But, uh, you know, I think when they look at the stat sheet and they see the win and they see what their productivity was, I think they, it was more than well worth it. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.